Jake and I are experiencing just a lot of things going wrong. We thought it'd be really cool to give you guys a tour. Put it like this and just come out. Oh my gosh, babe, look. <laughs>
Hallo. Good morning, everybody, or whatever it is where you are. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, it's morning here. It's about seven o'clock. Um, just waking up, made a cup of coffee, and I'm heading out to check on the garden. Jake is still sleeping. I just wanted to jump on here and talk about what's been going on. <laughs> so just feeling a bit frustrated and overwhelmed, honestly. Jake and I are experiencing just a lot of things going wrong and it's very frustrating because we are ready to get started with other projects like our bathroom and the hippie hot tub but we just keep hitting roadblocks and things keep going wrong and things keep breaking and it's really frustrating and it's really hard. We want to show you guys what we got. We got this awesome cool hippie hot tub set up and oh like there's the garden <laughs> and we can't do that until we down the trees but our truck broke and ugh, just and then we've been having a lot of technology problems and phones breaking and cameras breaking and mics breaking and it's like one thing after the other just things keep breaking <laughs> and falling apart and it's like we just can't catch a break but I will say this our garden is doing really awesome we have been dealing with a lot of birds and mice, but we are putting up the nets that we need to to prevent the birds and the glass jars, as you guys have seen in the last video for the mice, and it's been working. Here and there, we'll get a couple things pulled out of the ground, but um, it's not too bad. But we so badly want to show you guys all of these projects that we want to do. We have to down the trees first, and you know now our truck is broken, our van is, you know, pulled apart so we have to change a couple things in there and so and for us too like I so badly want a bathroom and I so badly want a hippie hot tub because I want to take a bath but I know that we have to be patient and 
you know, just fix the things that need to be fixed, obviously. So, I'm already walking a little too far, so I'm going to turn around here. And it's also been raining, 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 raining. It feels like it's been raining for two weeks. I'm sure it's been like a week and a half, but I miss the sun. Um, the sun will peek through sometimes, but it's been mostly just cloudy and rainy the last week and a half. <laughs> So that also adds to it because, you know, it's been feeling really like gray and gloomy. Kai running up the hill right now. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what's been going on here in Como Rebbe. It's a lot of rain, a lot of things breaking, a lot of things going wrong. Of course, we're gonna keep on going. And even if you live in the city, these kind of things happen. When it rains, it pours. So I know it's gonna be sunny here soon. I know the trucks are gonna be fixed. The trees are gonna come down and we're gonna have a bathroom before you know it and show you guys our awesome heavy hot tub that we have planned to build. It's gonna be so awesome and I cannot wait. And I'm so excited. We have a garden. We have a freaking garden. Last year around this time, we were still building our home and like now we have this awesome garden. You know, it's not our permanent garden, but we're growing food for ourselves and that is it's pretty powerful it's pretty powerful and honestly i have to say i'm pretty lucky to have jake <laughs> as my partner up here because he is a garden expert and he's done this before you know back in arizona he's had like 20 raised beds and 300 fruit trees so we are like three years ahead of schedule and I love that, and I love him for that, and I love that he's so passionate about gardening, and he just really does an amazing job, and I'm really grateful for that. So anyway, I'm going to um, probably go back over there and check on the garden and uh, wake Jake up with a cup of coffee. So all right, let's get on with the vlog, and I hope that you guys have an awesome day or evening or whatever it is for you guys, and I love you guys. You guys really keep us going. Um, we love showing you what we're doing here at Coma Rebbe, and um, yeah, we're just gonna keep doing our thing. I found a frog. He's so cute. I love his spots. Wow. You said he's so pretty. Yeah, he is. He has really cool spots. Oh, he's like blending in. You can hardly even see him. Can't even see him. Hey, how's the new kitchen set up going? Um, it's great. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's still a hand pump, but it's way better than the other one. Like, look how much water comes out with just one pump. And. That's a lot of water or a little water? It's like just enough water. I don't know how to explain it. The old one was just difficult because you'd have to like pump it over and over again and it would splash everywhere and it would just make a huge mess. This is just so much nicer. I mean, one pump and I can move on. And where does this water come from? This is the rainwater that we harvest off of the carport. So it's like a, a pipe that runs up here and we're using less of it, which is really nice. Yeah, the tank is a thousand liters and um, the folks that have followed us for a while, they know what the old pump looked like and what's the, which pump used more water? The black one for sure. The old one. Yeah, this one uses way less, but it's like controlled, it's nicer looking and now we have this new cedar countertops um, that we're able to like actually have things on the countertop, which is really nice. So I love it a lot. <laughs> Like the old pump would go through like a, a thousand liters in a week. And this one goes like a month, not even. It's been three weeks and the tank's not even half empty. Yeah, it's really nice. I like it a lot. It just looks more sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> you look sophisticated with all this Vancouver Island gear, like your pina style shirt and um, those Cedarwood organic mugs you're washing oh, in yeah. bowls. Yeah, these mugs are great. They're so nice. And you really like this one because it holds a lot of coffee and uh, tea. Let's see the image on there. And then my Pina Styles bear shirt. 
<laughs> I, like I it. love this. It's so nice. And it's nice weather today, so I can wear it and it feels really nice. So, yeah. All right, well, let's head down to the garden and uh, see if we can air layer some fruit trees. Yeah, for sure. Hey, babe, how's it going? Frustrating. I mean, Mitsubishi Delica, it's a Japanese import, and it's just really frustrating to um, do the maintenance on your own. And we got this car because it's a diesel. It's designed for off-gridding and off-roading. And it's a 4x4 tank beast van. And we lived in it at first. If you guys watch our first vlogs, we were living in this van. But I didn't expect to be doing like a ton of maintenance on it. So I'm replacing this coolant tank, which exploded. And I need Frodo from over here because I need little hobbit hands. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. We thought it'd be really cool to give you guys a tour slash update on our garden. Um, we've added some things, removed some things, had to change some things. Um, so let's go in. So when you first walk in, we have two really awesome wind chimes that I think add so much life to the garden and it just sounds really beautiful. So over on this side, we have a little raised bed and we have hyacinth beans and then behind it we have onions and we are covering them to uh, keep the birds and the mice away. And this trick is working, so. And it also creates a little bit of a greenhouse. And then over on this side, we have another raised bed. In this bed, we have scarlet runner beans and then we have onions behind and then of course um, have these covered to battle the mice um, but we are winning so that's good we're also going to put um, some homemade trellises along this so the beans can climb and cover the trellis so this is raised bed number one um, and it's mostly all of just our salad greens lettuce mix we have cabbage kale, and then we have two um, spinaches popping up. Bed number two, we have our carrots, which are popping up everywhere. We have, so we have carrot, carrots, leeks, more carrots, leeks, and onions down at the end. And they're really doing it. They're really popping up everywhere. This is our first year gardening here on this property. So I promise if you stick with us and subscribe, we're going to have an epic harvest. So stick with us. So, one of my favorite plants that I'm really excited about is we have some nasturtiums popping up right here. We have some here and then in that corner of the bed and then also over here. I've lost maybe about five nasturtium seeds because we've had the birds come up and pluck them out. So I've had to quickly replant them. This one has stayed the whole time. We have some baby ones popping up, so that's awesome. But I love nasturtiums. You can eat the leaves and the flowers and it's really, really good. And back here we have our potato patch. We have actually two potato patches. One is over there, but I'll show you that one here in a minute. We're hilling the potatoes. Um, so we're gonna add more logs and soil to build it up so we can get some more potatoes in there. If you guys have seen a couple episodes back, we are chitting these and this is what they look like. I am so impressed and so excited to see how amazing these are turning out and I can't wait to add more logs and to build it up. So let's move on to the next bed. So bed number three is mostly beets because I love beets. And there's so many things that you can do with beets. So we have our beets popping up everywhere. I think we have two different varieties. And then at the front half of the bed, we have arugula just all down the line and it's popping up everywhere. So down here at the end of this bed, we have two chives and two chamomiles that we got from a really good friend in the nearest town. And we also have more beets <laughs> in the middle of them. At the front of the bed, we have a line of marigolds We've been having a lot of slugs attack them, um, but they've seemed to be surviving. They look great and they are actually starting to bud. So, so stick with us to see them bloom. This is bed four. Let me go over there and show you guys what's in it. The front half of the bed is all dill. And then we have, here we have zucchini and pepper and then dill. Here we planted Swiss chard and we have a couple of Swiss chard popping up. And then we also have eggplant, which is uh, popping up right here in the middle. This next row, we have Brussels sprouts, and we have maybe about 12 Brussels sprouts that are popping up, which I'm really excited about because I love Brussels sprouts. And then here, we have a zucchini 
another eggplant, and then the dill. And in this row, we have some more chard, um, a different type of pepper, and then the dill in the front. And then here on the last row, um, we just have more Brussels sprouts, which we haven't seen pop up yet like the other side. Um, so hopefully, hopefully soon. So this little section of the garden is kind of turning into my herb garden. Um, we have rosemary, we have mint, spearmint, chocolate mint, some more mint, and then we have pineapple mint. And then here we have zinnias, which I planted from seed. And I've noticed before we put the net up that the birds were getting to them, but now that we have the net up, um, I haven't seen any missing, so that's good. And then behind me is a rose, and then we have some more mint right here. I have some more herbs that um, I'll be planting here soon, so again, subscribe. Um, I have lavender, or more lavender, rosemary, and a bunch of other stuff, but let me pass the camera off to Jake because he's going to show you what we have going on in the tires over here, which is really cool. Okay, I'm calling this the temporary garden. I kind of wanted to call it the Pan Vic Garden, so the Pandemic Victory Garden. <laughs> And this is the sunniest spot on the eight acre property here at Como Rebbe. Luckily, the old logging road that is kind of going to nowhere allowed there to be a gap in the tree line, which allows more sunlight to get through because we were battling no sunlight at all. So any amount of trees that we're cutting down, we're using the lumber to build the upcoming cob house, log cabin and washroom. And in their place, we're gonna plant fruit trees and have our, our food garden so we can survive and be off the food grid out here. Cause um, my main interest in being out here at Como Rebbe is gardening and growing myself off the food grid. So like Nicole said, the potatoes are really important and all the plants you just saw Nicole show you are really important because they're plants that are designed to make us tea, get us food. They're like staple crops, arugulas, leafy greens, potatoes, sunchokes, Jerusalem artichokes, tomatoes, chives, chamomile, mint, beets, carrots. These are all things that are going to produce food for us now. And then once we are successful at figuring out which plants really feed us then nicole and i will have some fun experimenting with more exotics and finding out you know what can we grow out here which is going to be a lot we're in the canadian rainforest the sun chokes we have like four varieties in here one variety is a local variety that um our friends that has a homestead down the way gifted to us and the other two varieties are purple varieties that are heirlooms so we're hoping we get a good mix what i'm finding is that before we had the netting up the blue jays were getting in here and digging up all the sun chokes so i'm gonna have to actually um put some more soil and then i'm gonna Today, I'm gonna to go get some comfrey, cut it, and cut and drop comfrey on top as like a green mulch. So that will, that will hopefully confuse the blue jays enough where they're not motivated to get inside this fence, which should be pretty secure now. Okay, tires. I've always wanted to plant in tires, so check it out. Some people might say, you know, you shouldn't do that because they're not natural like wood. At, um, in the town, I was able to find a bunch of these tires that I was gonna use for sports, martial arts, as well as um, kind of like concrete form for a building coming up, but they also make great raised beds. I've always wanted to do this because I think that tires is a great way to grow a garden, but it's also a great use for reclaimed tires that you know don't do anybody any good anymore. So we put these on the ground, we put soil inside of them, a mixture of peat moss, sand, compost, and we got some tomatoes in here. You guys will see, I'm gonna drill holes in these guys and put my trellis up there for a tomato cage. And then while they're small, at night I've been just covering them with a bucket in case we have mice trying to pick them off, but they're getting too big to where we're going to have to start letting them go because they should be about this size to really fruit tomatoes. And we have a combination of heirloom cherry tomatoes and tomatoes like Brandywines and Golden King of Siberia and Tibetan potato leaf and different kinds of determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. And then of course behind you guys watching the previous episode, Nicole and I capture all of these raspberries from the community garden that we showed you. The community was good enough to let us kind of take a few suckers off these raspberry plants and they, they all made it. We have five raspberry plants that are growing spectacularly that will decide where we're gonna plant them. We wanna keep them fenced off from the bears. Honestly, I'm most afraid of bears. Most folks that wanna be off grid and grow a garden, they don't know how to garden. And so there's like a learning curve. They spend two, three years trying to learn how to garden. Um, I know how to garden successfully. I just need my soil to get mature. So Nicole and I did a great job combining forest hummus with compost that we have been saving and making. That's our food scraps, but also seaweed from the ocean. And then all the pine shavings from all of our projects with the chainsaw. We're making our own compost back here. But then we also got in the local compost you guys saw a few episodes back. 
so that we really have the ability to jumpstart this garden from day one. But I promise you that this garden will thrive more so in year two and three once the soil gets mature. We have some more things to plant this week. We were able to find um, purple gooseberry, which I'm really excited about. We were able to find wasabi. So instead of growing horseradish, we're actually uh, gonna be growing our own wasabi, which does really well here uh, for all the sushi that we make. We got different varieties of blueberries. Um, we found goji berry and sea buckthorn. We found some more kiwi, male and female varieties. And then we even found monkey puzzle. Monkey puzzle is gonna be a key plant for us because I've heard that if you get the female variety, they can grow pine cones that actually have a huge pine nut on the inside. They're very sharp, like a cactus, but they're actually considered a conifer. I've seen a few properties around Vancouver Island that have, you know, 30, 40 foot or taller monkey puzzles. So what we'll do after this tour, we're gonna go and try to air layer a few folks that we found down the way, um, several miles away. We're gonna go over to their property and see if we can air layer a couple monkey puzzle branches, which means I'm gonna be bleeding uh, I try to air layer this thing. There's a well back here we're gonna tap into so that we have a water source nearby. And then we got some more tires we just laid down. Uh, we're growing lemongrass in one tire. And I'm hoping that once uh, the lemongrass roots up and grows successfully, we can divide it out and kind of propagate the lemongrass and grow it everywhere so we always have it for all of our curries and different soups and fuzz and recipes. Different kinds of tomatoes growing here. And I'm really hoping that these guys make it um, because Nicole said, that I'll be on her good side forever. If we get a huge crop of tomatoes this year, it's like gonna be her favorite thing. Um, I didn't think that we were gonna have enough time or long enough season or enough sun, um, but this is an experiment. We'll see if we can get a major crop. I'm really not interested in growing halfway. I'm kind of over the fact of just like getting a tomato to this point doesn't really do it for me. I really want to see the tomato get this bushy and get up to here and then really be loaded with tomatoes to where we're pulling out wheelbarrows of tomatoes so that we can dehydrate them, make sauces, and just really have an abundance of tomatoes that we can preserve for all winter. But when I started doing YouTube about gardening, I really didn't know what I was really doing. I was really excited just to see a carrot bed like this that had carrots that had come up just from seed. So the fact that Nicole is making her first gardening YouTube videos, it's really exciting for me to watch her be so excited about how we're, we are being successful so far growing leeks from seed and carrots from seed. And even though it'll be really fun to go and pull a huge carrot out of the ground, it's gonna be more so fun for Nicole and I to look back on this video and see where this garden started. This garden is gonna eventually be the guest garden. Um, so eventually when we have woofers come, uh, we'll have them tend to this garden. We'll probably expand it because our property goes back that way. So we'll probably cut into the alder, um, which are a renewable resource here, like bamboo almost and we're gonna use the space we cut for more garden. When you guys were watching us here at the vlog building these raised beds, people were asking what was the bark for on the ground and the bark was to block weeds because every garden that Nicole and I've ever seen that's serious um, was the one thing they battle more than anything else. Weeds. Yeah, you can even see like the salmon berries coming back behind me over here, they're starting to encroach. So the more that we cut these guys back, the more we'll snuff them out and the more we'll keep layering the wood chips in here. Um, so this bed will eventually have like two logs, maybe even three logs up. And over time, as the wood chips build up, we'll build the raised bed up and put more soil inside here. And we can't wait to host wolfers to have them really love this garden and take care of it. And not only will it provide food for them, but for us. Um, bok choy is something that's really personal to me because the time I've spent in China since I've been 19 years old, um, I was amazed when I first went to China that the people in communities in China, if you leave Beijing and leave Shanghai, the major metropolitan areas, and get into like the real China, they grow food everywhere. Every time that there's a pathway, you'll see bok choy and lettuces and greens just lining the pathways. They grow it everywhere. I really always remember that when I plant bok choy and these little bok choy that Nicole planted are really incredible. So what I've been wanting to do is just like, See how there's a bunch in this area right here? I don't wanna just eat them as microgreens, so I wanna grow an abundance of them, and there's a gap right here. There's some gaps down there. So I've been just um, going down inside of here and trying to like carefully pluck up uh, these plants and basically just divide them out and see if we can get more bok choy everywhere in sight. So like right now, these guys are stressed out to the nines, but a lot of root there. I'll leave one in place and I'll dig a new one right here in this spot. And I'll go get my watering can, I'll water right away and like six to eight inches is enough space apart where both these bok choys will thrive. And then Nicole and I will have lots of greens for kimchi and Asian soups. And if we can get a lime tree to grow in a greenhouse and if we can get the lemongrass going, 
uh, then we'll have a nice little little pho on our hands. There's no snakes in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're gonna cut some of this wild comfrey to, it's called cut and drop. And we're gonna put it in some of our raised beds to trick, hopefully trick the birds into leaving them alone. So basically this is gonna be a mulch. We're mostly gonna put it on our sun chokes. So get a bunch of this. You know, I think fruit trees are really powerful because it's really powerful to have your garden, but also to have your fruit trees and then work them together and have them be part of a family where the garden and the fruit trees live together. <laughs> We're so remote. There's no nursery nearby and to get fruit trees here is quite an ordeal. We've already got about 20 fruit trees here and um, it's quite tough because we have to get them from the nursery, drive them hundreds of miles and then get them on our boat and then take them across the ocean and take them up to our property and it's just, it's tough. So there's a lot of locals here that have lived here their whole lives and they have some really successful fruit trees that I don't want to hurt or kill. I want to try to save them and propagate their unique growing traits that work really well in our area. So air layering is going to be a way that I'm going to take like some apple trees that are these kinds that are all different varieties, plum that works really well here and a couple of nut trees and uh, monkey puzzle and others. And as we find people that are willing to say, hey, yeah, take a branch and uh, try to save the tree and propagate it. We're gonna do that and bring it to Como Rebi and then have fruit trees that have already proven themselves for our area. You get them for free. Um, it doesn't hurt the, the mother tree. And you're taking a genetically identical tree when you root the branch. So we're just gonna make a cut, pack some soil on the cut. Roots will grow out of that cut and then we'll come back in like a month or two and cut it and plant that whole tree. Some peat moss. Put in some native soil and got the rooting hormone in the bag and let's get to work. So we're going to try to pick the right branch here. We'll try a few different spots and hopefully we get the majority to take. I just saved all these bags. So I can just put it like this and then just kind of cover it around there and then we'll. I'm just going to use the string here. just to kind of like insulate it and keep birds away and um, people, that way people can see it too. I'll wrap it with the... 
like a baked potato. I actually don't mind if, um, if any of the seeds are viable, any sprouts, because like we're gonna use it medicinally, mm -hmm. right? But now I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the sun chokes will grow through the comfrey, but I think that the blue jays will be confused as to like, it's just too easy for the blue jays to see new soil and baby sun chokes. They dig the whole nuggets up. Yeah, I know. Let's see what happens in a month from now. Will we have Jerusalem artichokes or not? Wow, it smells so good. Oh my gosh, babe, look. We got some Fasalis coming up. What's in there? Fasalis or golden cherry or AKA ground cherry, uh, AKA pineapple tomatillo. <laughs> but it's like so tiny. These are gonna grow really well here. Where is it? I don't even know if the camera can pick that up. Yes. And then we have another one over here, a different variety, one popping up right here. That'll become a huge bush full of delicious cherries with a husk around them. Yeah, and this one I'm not seeing any yet, but I'm sure they're coming. Yay, these are my favorite. They're so good, so good. And they're so much fun to eat because you just peel them off that like wrapping that's around it and you just pop it in your mouth. So good. Flashback to uh, Novotero. And Nicole found the most beautiful spot that looks out into the property. Oh, hello there. Hi. <laughs> nice hammock. Thanks. And next to her right here, this is the goldenberry, inca berry, peachy berry, cape gooseberry, ground cherry, pineapple tomatillo, fasalis bush. <laughs> Did I cover all the names? And we picked the dry one. And the berries are on the inside. So amazing. Yeah. Portugal in the wolfing. Hammock, eating it, looking out the horses. That's great. Dinner time. Yes, dinner time. I'm so hungry. You see the color difference between the salmon berry started to ripen? Look at the coloring of that one. It's so orange. So orange. And this one's ripe too, like we're getting the first salmons of the season here. And then, whoa, this one's got two leaf bugs getting it on but then just right next door like literally next door are these guys same salmon berry but look at the i mean excuse my hands i've been living off grid but look at the color difference side by side it's crazy taste difference the red one's pretty good My eyes were closed, I couldn't tell the difference. Oh yeah? <laughs> but they're all good. Salmon yeah. berries don't really have that much of a taste anyway. I kind of, I like not them. like a raspberry. Those are the best ones I've ever had. Ever. Go get that big juicy one for me. What are you doing? <laughs> I just was passing and these salmon berries look like very unique, like the best ones I've ever seen. And there's like orange. And they're half eaten by birds, so I know they're the best ones. How was that one? It was really good. 